Diabetes mellitus is a disorder characterized by an imbalance between insulin production, insulin need, and the body's ability to use the available insulin. This imbalance can result from a total lack of insulin, from impaired release of insulin by the beta cells of the pancreas, from inadequate or defective insulin receptors in body tissues, or from the production of insulin that is either ineffective or destroyed before it can become effective. With uncontrolled diabetes, glucose cannot move from the bloodstream into muscles or fat cells, leading inevitably to hyperglycemia, which is a blood glucose level higher than the normal fasting blood glucose level. Diabetes also leads to starvation of those cells and a subsequent increase in the breakdown of fat and protein as the cells seek alternative sources of fuel. Diabetes mellitus is currently classified into two primary types, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 diabetes is characterized by a total lack of insulin caused by the destruction of the pancreas's beta cells. Type 1 is thought to arise from interaction between a genetic component and an acquired or environmental component predominantly in response to an autoimmune process. Type 1 diabetes probably develops over the course of years, with beta cell destruction happening well before the disease is diagnosed. Diagnosis is usually in childhood. Because it results in virtually absolute insulin deficiency, type 1 diabetes is treated with insulin injections. Type 2 diabetes is far more common than type 1. As with type 1, the pathophysiology of type 2 diabetes involves both genetic and acquired factors. Among acquired factors, obesity and physical inactivity are of paramount importance. The metabolic abnormalities that lead to type 2 diabetes include insufficient secretion of insulin by the pancreatic beta cells, peripheral insulin resistance, and increased glucose output by the liver. In type 2 diabetes, hyperglycemia develops despite the availability of insulin. Type 2 diabetes usually manifests in adults older than 40, although it is being diagnosed in increasingly younger patients. Type 2 diabetes mellitus can often be controlled by diet, exercise, and oral hypoglycemic agents. People with type 2 diabetes mellitus may or may not require insulin injections. Regardless of the underlying cause of diabetes mellitus, blood glucose control is disrupted and glucose builds up in the blood to abnormally high levels, making the person hyperglycemic. Although there is excess glucose in the blood, the glucose cannot enter the cells and the cells are starved for energy. The liver recognizes the cell starvation and initiates gluconeogenesis, further increasing blood glucose levels. In hyperglycemia, glucose that should be used as energy within the body cells is instead excreted through the kidneys in the urine. This is called glycosuria, a common sign of diabetes. Unable to utilize the blood's glucose, the insulin-deprived cells, starved for energy, begin to metabolize protein. This leads to the loss of intracellular potassium and phosphorus and to excessive liberation of amino acids. As osmotically active molecules of glucose remain at elevated levels in the blood, an osmotic effect between intracellular and extracellular fluid leads to severe fluid loss. Called osmotic diuresis, this dehydrating effect draws excessive fluid from the cells. As water and potassium pass out of the cells into the blood, this contributes to an electrolyte imbalance in which water loss exceeds the loss of glucose and electrolytes, contributing in turn to hyperosmolarity or the abnormally elevated concentration of osmotically active particles of glucose in the cellular fluid. Hyperosmolarity encourages even more osmotic diuresis. A deadly cycle develops as water loss exceeds electrolyte and glucose loss, perpetuating dehydration, which in turn exacerbates the electrolytic imbalance, and so on. Excess fluid is eliminated by the kidneys. Osmotic diuresis often leads to frequent urination called polyuria. Polyuria, along with polydipsia, or excessive thirst, are two common symptoms of diabetes. Meanwhile, the liver converts the liberated amino acids into urea and still more glucose, contributing to further hyperglycemia and glycosuria, which leads to even greater electrolyte imbalance, even as the kidneys become increasingly unable to process and excrete the rising levels of glucose in the urine. 
Symptoms of type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus include the three P's, polyuria, polydipsia, and polyphagia, which is excessive hunger. Other symptoms include fatigue, muscle weakness, and poor blood flow, which leads to further fatigue. Type 2 diabetics may also present with other nonspecific symptoms, including muscle wasting, vision changes such as blurring, numbness and tingling in hands or feet, dry skin, and skin lesions that are slow to heal. Type 1 patients may also experience nausea, severe vomiting, or abdominal pains. Complications of diabetes mellitus include serious acute and long-term conditions, each with its own complex pathophysiology. The most important acute complications are diabetic ketoacidosis, hyperosmolar hyperglycemic non-ketotic syndrome, and hypoglycemia. The long-term complications involve microvascular diseases, such as renal and retinal disease, macrovascular disease, such as coronary heart disease, stroke, and peripheral vascular disease, and neuropathies. Diabetes mellitus is a disorder of blood glucose control involving an absolute or relative deficiency of insulin or disrupted insulin reception, leading to hyperglycemia, osmotic diureses, and progression to life-threatening complications.